Scotty, today I'm cooking an octopus dish wow. inspired by one of my chefs. It's a Japanese dish. We're poaching it in green tea. Oh. We've got amazing octopus that we're using. It's caught off the waters of Fremantle. These guys are fantastic, aren't they? I mean, I love free hockey. We've been using them for years. And if Rick Stein says it's the best hockey in the world, then I suppose that's the end of the conversation. Well, that's, right? that's a serious call. <laughs> and you know what? I agree. It is the best octopus in the world. The way they catch it, it's not now a byproduct of crayfishing. It's actually specifically caught. And they treat it so carefully. And the freezing process, they freeze it down and that actually tenderises the octopus before we poach it off. OK, let's go. We'll get a couple of tablespoons of green tea, green tea into the saucepan, a little bit of salt. Oh, <laughs> just a, a Russell Blakey pinch of salt. Well, it's like cooking it in seawater almost. Yeah, OK. And we'll just get a hand of the octopus in. In she goes. Now, we're going to bring that to the boil, Scott. Once we get up to that temperature, we'll turn the heat down and cook it for 40 minutes. So, Scott, you can see we've just about got this octopus up to the simmer. The colour's yep. changing, it's curling up. And now that it's almost at that point of simmering, we'll just pop the lid on and uh, turn down the heat a little bit. Now, we've got to make some potato chips. Sure. Dead easy. Just some raw blue potatoes. We'll slice them really, really thinly. The key is nice and thin. You can cut them on the mandolin if you like. I'll just step back, Scotty. This could be dangerous. Into the pot. We're going to get them nice and brown. And it's as easy as that to yeah, cook some go. potato chips. Bingo. Another 30 seconds and we've got perfect colour. And they'll be really, really crisp. Nice amount of little puff on that one there. I'm going to pinch that one. I bags like, that one. It's like a pom souffle. OK, Russ, I think we're there. Let's turn that off. It's got out onto the paper to drain them. Watch your fingers. They're looking really, really good. You've got to be careful at this point. They're really crisp. Perfect. Great stuff. They are fantastic. And now we get to go with a little drizzling sauce that the Japanese make. It's a really traditional sauce. Some chicken stock. Any old chicken stock just off the shelf? It could be off the shelf. A couple of tablespoons of chicken stock. About a tablespoon of soy. Right. And I'm going to put a teaspoon of corn flour, right. just to thicken it. We'll just give that a stir with it. I'll get you to stir that with a spoon. Sure. And mate, let's pop that in the microwave for 30 seconds to get the corn flour cooked. And right. we'll have this beautiful, sticky, thick drizzle to go over our octopus. OK. And you know what? It takes 30 seconds to make the last component of this dish. Right. We're going to get some Japanese mayonnaise. There you go. Lime juice and some lime zest in there. Look and that's that. going to give a real funky spark cool. to this dish. Yeah, because there's some big flavours going on already, isn't there? Look, what? people tend to think octopus is strong, but it's not. I think it's got the most beautiful flavour of the ocean. OK, lime mayonnaise done. Great. Let's get the octopus. This has now been sitting in that pan for about an hour. It's cooled right down to room temperature. And look wow. at that Oki beauty. Wow. Onto the board. Thank you. Sure. Now, the key here to clean this octopus is really use these, mate. OK. OK? Yeah. So all I'm going to do... There's no way around it. I'm just going to strip those tentacles apart. And as I pull them, really, that skin on the back of the tentacle literally comes off. So you see, I'm going to leave the suckers on. I yeah. love those visuals. I, yeah. I'm just going to run my hand down to, down the tentacle. Right. And I've got the perfect tentacle ready to use for this dish. It really did just fall apart like a good lamb shank. And if you squeeze it, it's, yeah. it's firm, but when we slice it thinly, it's going to be absolutely deliciously, lightly chewy, but fantastic. Great. I'm just going to slice the octopus nice and thin. Oh, look at that. So you get some of those tentacles and you get Nice thin slices, get your fingers off. We're going to char grill it, mate. Oh, so, a little bit of oil and seasoning. Yep. A little bit of salt onto the char. We're just warming it up, Scott. We're not, we don't need to cook it anymore. Now, let's get our plate and let's, let's build. We're just going to finish this off now and that chicken 
kind of drizzle that we made in the microwave. Such a cute just little idea. Over the top. Do you know, I've learned some really cool tricks off you, Russ, but I reckon that's right up there. Three little ingredients and you get that lovely textural kind of taste and that balance. I think that's a real clever one. Shichimi. This is the spark that the Japanese love. Wow. Over the top again. And mate, then we just finish off with a few of these little micro herbs and just that. place it on top of the octopus. A few little pieces. Yep, nothing too much. Great. Dig dish. in, dig in. Great. Come dish. on. Here oh. we go. And a crunch of the potato. Well done, Rush. Mm. The producer is rolling his eyes at me because I'm going to talk about Chardonnay again, but dag nabbit, I'm allowed to. I love this stuff and it gets such a bad rep. God, there were some terrible Shardies late 90s, but things have changed. What I love about it, it's got the refreshing crispness of a Sauvignon Blanc or a Riesling because it's got lovely high acid, so it's great to be drinking in the summer. Plus, if you're a red wine drinker, it's got those kind of broad-shouldered bigness and oak treatment that you like to see in some of those big reds. So it's a versatile wine that smells great and looks great. It enables you to drink it with great big flavours like this. I've saved maybe my favourite wine, this Voyager Estate Shardy, to go with maybe my favourite dish of the series. This Oki has got such big flavours and the Shardy can stand up to it. It's got the acid to clean up that fatness and it's got the broadness to stand up to those big shichimi flavours. Don't be shy, get yourself some Shardy, will you?